The uh, first veteran we are honoring today is uh, Philip Giganti. Philip J. Philip Gigante joined the Navy after graduating college under the Officer Candidate School program. He was stationed on the USS Escape doing rescue salvage work. He volunteered for Vietnam duty and became the youngest fleet line officer in the Navy. His assignment, protecting the rivers and harbors around Da Trang. That meant keeping his men safe, providing security, and checking for contraband. Like other military personnel who served in Vietnam, Mr. Gigante of Montville suffers from Agent Orange-related illnesses. He also realizes, though, that the Vietnamese people suffered as well. He remembers coming home to no fanfare, no thank yous, but says he is still very proud of his service to his country. He's married with four children and seven grandchildren, Philip Chicante. And the veterans, as you receive your medal, if you would just uh, stand up here with the freeholders until your bios are uh, complete. Our next veteran is William Hughes. <laughs> William Hughes is an Army veteran who served in the Korean War. He grew up in Maine in a house that had no heat or electricity. But he says that enabled him to endure the 40 below temperatures in Korea. He was a young man who joined the Special Forces, one of 34 who made it out of 150 recruits. He saw action at the Battle of Porkchop Hill, where many casualties occurred and men were suffering from battle fatigue. But it was his Special Forces training that allowed him to calm his men. Mr. Muse of Bud Lake received a number of awards and commendations, including the Bronze Star for Valor and the Combat Infantry Badge. He's been active in Boy Scouts most of his life and received that organization's highest award given to a civilian, the Silver Bear Award. He's married with four children and volunteers with the Mount Olive School District Special Needs Children. William Yu. John Jack Callahan. was drafted twice actually, once by baseball's Boston Red Sox organization, then by the armed forces during the Vietnam War. He joined the Navy and became a Marine Corps pilot. He served two nine-month tours aboard the USS Forrestal, where he conducted night bombing runs to Vietnam and also flew refueling runs to assist aircraft needing assistance. Now, this is the type of flying that required quick reflexes and the young pilots landing on aircraft carriers, whether day or night, requires steady nerves. Mr. Callahan is a Montville resident who recently attended a memorial service in Seattle, Washington of a pilot friend who was shot down over Vietnam. He had been listening and missing in action until his body was discovered in 2006. Mr. Callahan has been married 42 years. He has two daughters, John Jack Callahan. Rod Rodolfo. <laughs> Mr. Rodolfo was drafted into the Army in Newark when he was 21. He trained as Airborne Infantry, attaining the rank of Staff Sergeant in 18 months. His platoon served in Vietnam, where it lost half of its men. He was asked to be platoon leader and remembers continuous body counts that were conducted after every search and destroy mission. He also remembers the race riots in Newark while his unit was fighting in Vietnam. He says he came back to that same America he saw on TV. Very disturbing to most Vietnam vets. A Montville resident, Mr. Rodolfo earned two air medals, a bronze star, and the combat infantry badge, together with many unit citations while fighting for his nation. He has succeeded in the business world, owning a number of salons and skin care distributorships. He has two children and is married to Louise for 16 years. Rod Rodolfo. Our next medal is being presented posthumously to Eugene Baza and will be accepted by his wife, Nancy.
Eugene Baza of Rockaway was inducted into the Army in December 1953. He served in Korea. He was discharged as a medic November 30th, 1961. As a medic, he remembered all of those big, brave inductees coming into the induction centers for their shots, but then passing out once they saw the needle. <laughs> While serving in Korea, he told of seeing the burial grounds of deceased soldiers and other citizens. He said there were beautifully landscaped areas where loved ones could come and show their respect. Mr. Baza was a graduate of Newark College of Engineering, now NJIT. He worked at Picatinny for 30 years. He was a big sports fan. He enjoyed watching his grandson play hockey. He has two sons and a daughter, and he and Nancy were married for 46 years when he passed away at the age of 80. Eugene Baza. Anthony Semmes. If he is not here, we will tell you a bit about him. He is uh, an Army veteran from Papatcong who served his nation from June 1953 to February 1954. He received the National Defense Service Medal, and he is a former professional bowler who was in the PBA Hall of Fame. Richard Porzig. Richard Porzig is a Vietnam veteran who had to sign a waiver to join the Marines because he was taller than the maximum height allowed. His unit in Vietnam provided protection for various fire bases and filled in for shortages in other units from Da Nang to Khe Son. He also provided protection for a priest who traveled from unit to unit, offering the Eucharist to soldiers. It was the cause of Chaplain Houston, who risked his life to offer a moment of peace to fighting Marines, that Mr. Porzik says he is the man he is today. The Chaplain Houston lost his life after returning to the United States. Mr. Porzik resides in Mountain Lakes. He is a life member of the Vietnam Veterans of America and the Disabled American Veterans. He is dedicated to the mission of honor which puts to rest the remains of deceased soldiers who were previously unidentified. He's also instrumental in ceremonies for Gold Star Mothers, air shows, and arranging for flyovers. He has designed memorial plaques for fallen comrades in the war, and a special one is in place at Lyons Hospital for his friend, Chaplain Houston. Richard Porzig. Hunter. Alarcon. Uh, he could not make it today, but I will tell you a little bit about Hunter, who grew up in Long Valley. He joined the Marines when he was 19, scored high on the entrance exam, could have chosen any military duty other than infantry, but that is in fact what he selected. He is a resident of Flanders, who attends Centenary College, and is enrolled in veterinary medicine there. Uh, he did suffer a bad accident while he was serving in the Gulf War. Uh, he was discharged in October 2011, Hunter Alarcon. <laughs> Joseph Demo. <laughs> Joseph Demo was born in Patterson. He was drafted into the Army during the Vietnam War. He was sent to Guam to be deployed to Vietnam with the 199th Light Infantry Brigade, the epitome of the U.S. Army Infantry Units. 700 men were killed in action in the 199th from 1966 to 1970. More than 4,500 were wounded, and four medals of honor were earned by the unit, including one by the brigade chaplain in 1967, just the fifth military chaplain in military history to receive the Medal of Honor. Mr. Demo of Riverdale volunteered to extend his duty in Vietnam because the unit was short of manpower. He did this knowing all full well the losses already incurred. For his service to our nation, he was awarded the Combat Infantry Badge, the National Defense Medal, and the Vietnam Campaign Medal. A disabled combat vet, he is married to Catherine for 34 years. They have th uh, three children, one adopted son, and two foster children. Joseph Demo. James Nassara. <laughs> Mr.
Mr. Nassara was born in Brooklyn in 1915. He is a veteran of World War II. Joined the Army at 27 after it seemed like everyone else had been drafted. He served under General Patton, who was given the command of the 3rd U.S. Army. Mr. Nassara remembers Patton sweeping across France, capturing town after town. Patton's direction to his troops, keep on advancing, whether we go over, under, or through the enemy. General Patton liberated Germany from the Nazis in 10 days. Mr. Nassara chose to stay in the lower ranks of service rather than advance to the ranks of non-commissioned officer. One of his responsibilities was processing dead soldiers for proper burial and ceremony. He received five battle stars for his combat duty. After the service, he worked for the New York Transit Authority and received a commendation letter from Mayor Fiorello LaGuardia thanking him for his service to his country. At the age of 70, Mr. Nassara of Sakasana was still working in the Morris County court system. James Nassara. <laughs> Charles D. Ferry II. <laughs> Charles Ferry is a retired major with the United States Air Force. He joined in 1956 through the Officer Candidate School and was trained as a pilot. He flew the C-135, which was used as a mid-air refueler for the fighting aircraft in Vietnam, and the C-130, which was used for bombing the North Vietnamese. He remembers the awful destruction of the heavy bombs dropped over Vietnam. One bomb fit the entire C-135 aircraft. He dropped a total of three. They were called Daisy Cutters. Mr. Ferry is a Montville resident. He was also responsible for flying the North Korean delegation to Saigon to sign the peace agreement at war's end. He received numerous medals, including 187 air medals. He completed his duties with the Strategic Air Command and with NASA. He was discharged in 1976, but even as a major and a college grad, he, like many other Vietnam vets, was not offered work. He finally took a job as a janitor. He persevered and eventually rose to success in the medical field. Charles D. Perry II. Arnold Hokins. Arnold Hokins is a Franklin resident and an Army veteran who served in Vietnam. He remembers arriving at Cameron Bay, Vietnam, and seeing all the negative television publicity about Vietnam and the casualties. Within minutes of landing and after deplaning, he and the others began taking incoming fire. He thought to himself, welcome to Vietnam. One of his jobs was to inventory the personal effects of those soldiers killed in action, wounded, or missing in action. He would also offload wounded soldiers who were hurt in firefights to Long Bin Army Base for medical care. Mr. Hokins was also within 10 miles of the Cambodian border where they were subjected to B-52 bombers dropping their payloads on enemy soldiers. Reporting back after the destruction was another part of his job. Mr. Hokins serves his nation honorably and says, even though the war had a lasting impression on him and his family, he has no regrets. Today, he helps others like him recover from the effects of war. He received the Vietnam Service Medal, the Vietnam Campaign Medal, and the National Defense Service Medal. Arnold Hokins. John Nettleup. John Meadowluck of Rockaway was born in Harrison, and when he was 20, he was granted a deferment from the World War II draft because he worked for a company that made bombs. However, he wanted to be part of the action, so he joined the Army and was attached to the 116th AAA Gun Battalion, which entered combat June 7, 1944, D-Day plus one, at Utah Beach in Normandy, under the command of Colonel James Shiras. After landing at Utah and Normandy, his battalion stormed through Paris, then marched to Belgium, Holland, and eventually to Germany. He fought battles in Central Europe and the Rhineland. He was proficient in all infantry maneuvers and trained with weapons such as 90 millimeter guns and 50 caliber machine guns. He received the World War II Victory Medal, the Good Conduct Medal, and the European African Middle Eastern Service Medal. After serving his nation, he worked for the Maxwell House Coffee Company for 29 years. He has a daughter and a son, John Natola. John D. Jack Reed, Sr. <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. Reed is a native of Scranton, Pennsylvania, who, along with his three brothers, joined the service at a young age during World War II because they did not want to wait for the draft. John joined the Navy Seabees at 17. He was assigned to active duty February 24, 1943. Mr. Reed and one of his brothers were sent to fight in Algeria, Naples, and southern France, and was there for D-Day. His service to our country earned him the American Campaign Medal, the Asiatic Pacific Campaign Medal, a Combat Action Ribbon, the World War II Victory Medal, and the Philippines Occupation Medal. After his discharge, he worked for the New York Times for 28 years. A Hackerstown resident, he and his wife had nine children. Jack Reed Sr. Our next medal is being presented posthumously to Derek Trey McConnell. It will be accepted by his mother, Siobhan Fuller McConnell. <laughs> Derek Trey McConnell grew up in North Caldwell, graduated from West Essex Regional High in June 2008, moved to Parsippany with his family in August 2009. In January 2010, he left for Army basic training and was deployed to Afghanistan in March 2011. He proudly served with the 10th Mountain Division, 287B Company, where he exemplified the 10th Mountain's motto, Climb to Glory. On July 23, 2011, while attempting to secure a landing zone for an injured lieutenant, Mr. McConnell stepped on an IED. He lost both legs, sustained traumatic injury to his right arm, as well as several fractures and life-threatening infections. He spent 53 days in the ICU and seven months as an inpatient at Walter Reed Hospital, then moved on to rehabilitation housing where he was for more than a year. Never let his injuries get him down, though, devoting himself to improving his quality of life. He was, uh, he was promoted to sergeant in January 2013. He was looking forward to being medically retired from the Army this summer, as well as picking up his service dog, and marrying the girl of his dreams, Christina Dressler, in January 2014. Unfortunately, Derek's dreams and goals were not to be realized. For a reason still unknown, Derek passed away, climbing to eternal glory just two months ago. Derek Trey McConnell. That uh, concludes the medal ceremony.